Top of the day to you. I'm Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to find the x, or aka the t-intercepts, of a particular function. All right, so here's the function. We have c of t is equal to 2 multiplied by t minus 4 multiplied by t plus 1 multiplied by t minus 6. All right, and I'm going to teach this to you algebraically, but then we'll use the uh, calculator to kind of double check ourselves. All right, now what's nice about this is this uh, function is already in a factored form. What I mean by that is I kind of, I noticed that I have basically, uh, let me underline them, four unique characteristics, okay? Now, the only way, okay, uh, that, and remember the logic, actually. So what does it mean to be a t-intercept? So pretend you have a graph and t would be written on the uh, horizontal axis and the c of t, the function's value, would be written on the vertical axis. So pretend you had a function that looks like this, okay, some thing. Now, what does it mean to be a t-intercept? Well, it simply means the function's value at the locations where it crosses that t-axis, okay, those points. Now, it turns out that we know something special about all those points. We actually know something about each one of these three points. Do you know what it is? Do you know a value we know about those points? Remember, every point on a graph, any point on a coordinate system that has two dimensions to it, it could always be described with two values, an x and a y value, or in this case, a t and a c of t value. All three of those points have an unknown x value, but a known c of t value, or a known y value, okay? They all have a known y value, all of them, okay? So what that means is that the t-intercepts, or aka x-intercepts, uh, will be the locations or the values of t or values of x when the y, or when the function's value, or in this case, when the c of t is equal to zero, okay? That's what you gotta keep in mind. Now, just think about this logically for a minute right now, okay? Now go back to the function. What I said here is that this whole term here has to be zero, and that has to equal this whole right-hand side, right? t minus four, t plus one. Let me make that a little neater. t plus one, and then t minus six, okay? Now, if you just think about this, the only way that this whole right-hand side is going to become zero is in a few different is with a few conditions. If this term is equal to zero, then what does this whole side become? It has to become zero, right? Because this would be two times zero times who cares what that is times who cares what that is. But no matter what, as long as you have a zero in there, zero times anything is always going to be zero, right? So. What I'm saying is that, erasing all that, when this thing becomes zero, I know this whole right-hand side would go to zero. Or, if this thing becomes zero, then I know the same exact thing, that this whole right-hand side goes to zero, and guess what? Or, if that term goes to zero, then I know the same condition is gonna hold, right? I know that to be the case. And why am I choosing these three? Well, I'm choosing those three because I'm trying to find the t-value that makes this thing become zero. Right? So I'm saying if this term becomes zero somehow with, oh, I don't know, what would t have to be in order for this thing to turn out to be zero? What do you think? Right? t has to be four. I mean, you see that already. Right? What does this t have to be in order for this whole term to go to zero? You might see it already. Oh, t has to be one. Right? Oh, excuse me. Oh, no. Negative one. Just kidding. Seeing if you're paying attention. And then what does t have to be for this one in order for it to go to zero? Well, t has to then be a six. Right? I mean, you already answered the question, so guess what? These are your intercepts. I mean, it's literally that simple. Okay? But how would you do that algebraically now? Well, I mean, we kind of did. We did a little bit algebraically, and we thought about it then. But if you had to kind of do this now al fully algebraically, let me just actually, I'll leave that. So what you would now do is you would create little math equations for yourself. Okay? Because what you're saying to yourself is only if this term could somehow equal zero. Well, write that out. What does that even mean? Mathematically, it means t minus 4 equals 0, okay? Then you say to yourself, man, if only this term could equal 0, then it would go to 0. Well, what does that mean mathematically? It means t plus 1 better equal 0, okay? Last but not least, write the same logic. t minus 6 has to equal 0. So solve this now. Use algebra. Plus 4 on both sides. t is equal to positive 4. OMG, isn't that what we said over here? Yes. Minus 1 for both sides on this one, t is equal to a negative 1. OMG, look at that. 
Add 6 to both sides. Wait a minute. T is equal to 6. Is that true? Oh, my God. There it is. Look at how easy that is. Right? That's all it is. Now, you can go to your calculator and double check it if you want. So plug in the function 2, parenthesis, t minus 4. So in this case, we're not going to use it. We're going to use x. Okay? t minus 4, close parentheses, open parentheses, x plus 1. And then open the parentheses again, and it's going to be x minus 6. All right. Now you can hit graph if you like. And there's the function, right? Now, if you just notice from this picture, my goodness, I'm running out of breath. I must be yelling. Or I need to work out one of the two. Maybe it's a combination of both. Anyway, so here. This is where this is the location where the function crosses the x-axis. What the x value there? It's a negative 1. Oh, goody gumdrops. That's what we said already. Right? Look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 4. That's what we said. And look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, goody gumdrops. It's a 6. Right? Look at how easy that is. Now you can also go to the table if you want. Go to table. And I want you to scroll through this and find out now the locations where the y value is 0. So if you notice, the y value is 0 in three places. 1, 2, and 3. And we have minus 1, 4, and 6. Minus 1, 4, and 6. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope that helps. That's a whole bunch of ways to check it. And uh, it's this is really actually pretty easy. It seems hard in the beginning, but I want it, it is easy. Okay? I don't want you to do mathematics like blindfolded. I want you to think about what you're doing while you're doing it. The good, the good part is that when the math becomes more challenging, you want a process to follow, but you want to understand the process. So in case the problems change by a little bit, you're not up the creek without the paddle, so to speak. Okay? I want to teach you how to think, not what to think. Guys, again, thanks for tuning in. Help us out if you can. Like, subscribe, tell some of your classmates. We'd appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah, I look forward to helping you with more problems. All right? I'll see you then. Take care.